Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome back to the channel and your first steps into Logic Pro. In this course, we're looking at getting you up and running in Logic Pro as fast as possible with the basic features you need to start making some music. We've already covered most of it off in the other videos. We've taken a look at the introduction, the materials you need, an introduction to the interface, as well as audio tracks, software instruments, and how to start your mixing journey. What we're gonna take a look at now though is project management. Sounds boring, but it is incredibly important. We're gonna take a look at how to save and consolidate all of your files into one project, zip that project for collaboration, and also how to export tracks, regions, or your whole session for distribution. So let's dive on in. Okay, so it seems like a really boring subject, but saving is really important. And being able to zip and compress your files into a single file ready for distribution or collaboration is really important to get a grip of now to make your life a little bit easier in the future. So let's talk about saving the session to begin with. So I've got the session open at the moment, and of course I've already been saving it. And I would definitely recommend as soon as you open a new session, save straight away. Logic has an auto save feature, but only if you save the project initially to begin with. So save the project even before you've done anything. And then that way, if anything goes wrong, hopefully you haven't lost too much. So in this case, if I go up to file and save as, save will override the save that I've currently got going. And it would just, you know, that's great to do as you're going through your project. But the very first time you're gonna to wanna to hit save as. Once you've clicked save as, you're gonna to want to navigate to the part of your computer where you would like to store that file. So I've actually gone to my logic folder and then into another folder called video, and I'm gonna save it here. I wanna give it a name, obviously. So logic training bit demo there, I'm gonna name it that, but, this is where it gets really important. Now there are two types of ways that Logic can save files. It can save it as a package or as a folder. I always like to recommend package. The reason for this is if you save it as a package, it basically saves it as a single file that when you double click on it, it opens up the session for you. You don't see any of the folders or the back end or have to manage where the files are positioned or anything like that. Logic takes care of all of that for you. And it gives you a single icon that you double click and it opens up your session. If you choose folder, it won't break anything, but what it will do is it will put a folder for your session and inside that folder is your session folder, a folder for all of your resources, a folder for all of the audio samples that you've recorded from your guitars and vocals and whatever, and any other kind of settings or whatever you need in order to make this session run. The problem with that is if you accidentally delete a file in that folder without realizing it, you could end up stuffing up the whole thing because you accidentally deleted the session file or you accidentally deleted all of your guitar files or something like that, that would be tragic. So I like to say store as a package to save yourself that drama later on. The other thing is this list of tick boxes here. This list essentially is saying, what would you like to include in the package? Now these won't all be on by default. However, I have ticked them all on. The reason I tick them all on is when I'm working with someone else, I'm never entirely sure what they have on their computer. So if there are some custom things or files that I've brought into Logic that they certainly don't have, I wanna make sure that everything is in that file. That way, when they open it, everything runs smoothly. It doesn't fix the issue that if they don't have the plugin, they won't be able to play your track. I mean, there is that issue. So if you've bought a fancy audio plugin or a software instrument that the other person you're collaborating with doesn't have, it's not gonna work. They do need to buy that one as well. But if you've recorded your own audio files or you've added a movie to the file and you've been scoring along to the movie or you've got custom settings in Alchemy, whatever it might be, you wanna bring all of those things in. Some of those options, for example, like audio files, you obviously want that ticked so that anything you record gets stored in your package. Movie file, as I mentioned before, if you've been writing to a movie, if you don't have this one ticked, Logic will only remember where the movie is stored on your computer. And if you move that, or you take this session to someone else's computer, that's gonna be missing. So you can see how this might be a bit of a time saver. It is gonna inflate the file size because there's gonna be more in there. The more things you add, the more things you pull from, the more it's gonna save stuff, but it will help in the long run. So let's save that one there. I'm gonna hit save. That's gonna save my session all done. Now I've navigated to the folder that I have in my logic folder, and here is the session. The session actually looks like a little mini window of the uh, session that you were just using, which is kind of cool. 
If I double click it, it's going to open up the session file. Now I can go in here, if I right click and go show package contents, I can actually go see the folder structure that I would have had if I stored it as a folder. This is actually what would have happened if you'd saved it as a folder, except there would have also been a little session file here that you would have had to double click in order to open up your session. But this package makes it much easier. And if you want to move it around your computer, you just pick up this whole thing and move it about and all the files go with it. You're not going to accidentally leave anything behind. Now, when you are collaborating and sending things to other people, particularly if you're storing them on a cloud, it is best to compress your file into a zip folder. What I mean by that is if I right click and hit compress, it's going to take a moment to compress it, but it's going to create a second folder there. This is actually a single file. What compressing does is it compresses everything that's in a folder structure, everything that might be lots of little different files into one file. Now you can't use that file while it's compressed because it needs to be those bigger separated files in order to make it work. But by compressing it into one file and then uploading it to OneDrive or Google Drive or iCloud or whatever, that is going to make it easier to upload because the drive, it just thinks it's one file. But also it means that you don't accidentally put it up on the drive and then accidentally again delete files from it. For example, Google Drive, if you drag and drop a logic package on there, Google doesn't know what a logic package is. It just treats it like a folder. So you've suddenly got a folder with lots of other little things. And if you then right click and try and download that folder, Google Drive, it actually zips everything first before you download it. So you're back to square one anyway. So you might as well get into the habit of zipping your file before you put it onto your drive. That way you're limiting the possibility of things going wrong. And that's what we're trying to do when collaborating with people. We don't want anything to go wrong. We don't want any files missing. Now, if you've saved your file before and you didn't have all of those options ticked, don't worry, you can still bring all those files back in. If you jump into file and you go into project management and consolidate, it's going to try and drag everything in and it gives you again the option to tick all those items. So I could say copy Apple sound library content, for example, check that one on, click OK, and it will make sure that it copies everything in. That way you don't have to resave everything or save as or anything like that. You can consolidate everything. And if someone opens up your file and says, hey, I'm missing something, you can come back to your session, consolidate the file, zip it again, and try and send it to them. At this point, it's a great time to mention backups. Backup everything. On my computer, I have a hard drive that's connected that constantly backs up my, my sessions as I'm going. That way I never have to think, oh, I need to back up something as a, like a separate exercise. It's just automatically doing it for me. However, the concept of backup is just making sure that you have an up-to-date copy in two places. That might be a hard drive and your computer. That might be Google Drive and your computer. As long as it's in two places and both of them are up-to-date, you're good to go. That way, if you lose one, you don't lose the other. Imagine if you're on a bus and you accidentally leave your laptop on there and it's gone forever. That would be incredibly sad, but it would be even more sad if all of your files were on there and nowhere else. It's also great to mention at that point that backups need to be in two different locations. It sounds silly, but some people format their hard drive and put in two partitions and think that because they've copied it to the same hard drive in two different places, that's backed up. If the hard drive dies, both copies go. Make sure you've got your backups in two separate locations. Now let's take a look at exporting tracks or regions or the whole track as a finished product. Let's say you're really happy with the mix and you want to send it out or you want to put it up onto Spotify or, or maybe you just, you just want to test it on some other speakers other than your studio setup. You can do this by bouncing a stereo file ready to use and ready to be played on your phone or on your car or whatever. First of all, I want to make sure I've got nothing selected. And then I want to jump up to file and go to bounce and go project or section. If I had something selected at this point, then it would, that would be the section and it would only bounce that part. So make sure you don't have anything selected, then click this. From here, there are a number of formats that you can export things into. You can export them as a WAV file or WAV file, which is a, a nice lossless format, high quality detail, or something like MP3, which is a little bit lower in quality, but a much smaller size. Different distribution centers will require different standards. For example, if you're uploading to Spotify or iTunes, you probably want to upload something like a WAV file because that's going to be much higher quality. But an MP3 might be exactly what your radio station, your local radio station might ask for. So that's what these options are here. So I've got my PCM, which is actually my WAV file. And then I've got options below that. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what these options are, but 
in order for you to have a high quality file, I would stick to 24 bit and 44.1 or 44,100 sample rate. Those, that's a quite high quality sample rate and is something that Spotify and iTunes is quite happy with when releasing. The file type though is important to put interleaved. You want both the left and right speakers to be in the one file. You don't want them split out into two files. If you select the MP3 option and turn that one on, you've also got different options. And again, the mono and stereo bit depth rate gives you better or lower quality. The lower the number, usually the lower the quality. There's a lot more to it than that, of course, but this will get you started. Once you've selected those two, let's leave those, both of those two selected. Then I'm going to move down to here. The start and end time is the bar start and end time of my project. So my project actually doesn't start until bar four, really, or maybe three and a half. So I might change this to three and on beat three. So that's going to start right here. For the end, it ends pretty much, I would say 24. So let's bring that back to 24. That's going to reduce the amount of time that this track takes. Now the mode real time or offline just means, is it going to sit here and play the track in real time and mix it together? Or is it going to do it offline? Most of the time you're just going to want it offline. There's no better or worse option in terms of quality. It's just that if you're using analog equipment to mix with, which you're probably not doing at this stage, you're going to want real time. But for most of the time, if you're working completely in the box with only audio plugins and stuff that's on the, the door itself, offline is going to be perfectly fine. It's best to leave normalize off. What normalize does is try to take the loudest sound and put it at zero, you know, the highest volume it can do. We don't want to do that at this stage. Really, we want to leave it as it's coming out of the door. For example, if you want to send this to a mastering engineer, if you normalize it, it's not going to give them enough headroom to actually work. So leave that one as off. The only time I would say to change it is maybe if overload protection is going to stop it from clipping, that might be an idea, but otherwise off is the way to go. All right, then you would click OK. And at this point, you would navigate to where you want to store the file, give it a name, and hit bounce. And it's going to take a moment and go through and bounce the tracks. You can see the playhead moving there as it goes through and mixes everything together, creating the stereo files. Now we can see a .mp3 and a .wav or .wav there. So we've got both tracks ready to play. At this point, they're ready for Spotify. If you want to send it out there or upload to SoundCloud or even just share with friends or family or colleagues or people you can trust to give you a bit of a feedback for it, that would definitely be great. Now, the other thing you can do, which is quite useful sometimes, is you can choose to export just certain tracks. Let's say, for example, I want to send all of these tracks as individual tracks for someone else to mix. They can bring it into their session and mix everything. So let me select all of these tracks. Just hit the shift key and select all of them. And I'm going to come up to file. And this time I'm going to choose export and go set 14 tracks as audio files. If I then navigate to my folder where I've been storing everything at the moment, I can develop individual files for each track. It's really quite useful when you're trying to get someone else to mix your stuff because then that way they don't have to open up your session. They don't even have to be logic users. They can bring all of these tracks into their own session and start from scratch. This gives you a few naming options so you can you can choose different elements. So for instance, in here is track name and then afterwards custom. So if you want to put something custom in here, say such as the uh, track name might be logic demo or something like that. Um, I might even put an underscore at the front. So then it will be the track name underscore logic demo for every single track. I've got some options as well. Here's a normalize again, make sure that one's off or on overload protection and then whether I want to bypass all the effects on each track, whether I want to include the volume and pan automation. That might be a good one, for instance, because I have used that. So these sorts of options give you the control to then export these tracks and have someone else mix them for you. That could be really cool, particularly when you're starting out or even to see what someone else comes up with from your track. You can also do the same thing with individual regions. So if you really like a particular region, let's say this symbol sound, this reverse symbol sound you really like, we could go up to file, again to export and this time I'm going to go one region as audio file and it will save just the region. It's the same sort of box except this time it's got region name instead of track name but it's very similar and we can save them all in there. That way if you've got a really cool sample that you've made in this track and you want to use it in other tracks here's a great way to save that so you can do that.
With these simple foundational skills, you'll make sure that your sessions work every time and that your audio sounds great when you're exporting it. Collaborations will run smoothly and you'll be happier for it. In the next and final video, we're gonna recap and debrief what we've covered and offer some final pieces of advice for your first project in Logic Pro. So do hit subscribe and head to the next one. I will catch you there.